Hello, my aviation chums. Yes, I found the key to my helicopter. No, of course not. But it is a very important piece of kit because it is the instrument panel. Yes, that's what we're going to be doing today. It is time for the electrics. In front of me are just some of the instruments that we've got to put in. Because I've got a list here. I've got radio, transponder, intercom, antennas, GPS, compass, altimeter. I need dual temperature water. It goes on and on and on. And I've got to fit it all. And the worst thing is down here. Look at this. Wiring looms. The helicopter is now more than halfway complete. Got them? If you think it looks complicated, it is. It's time to put in the tanks. Run all this lead here into this tube. Ooh. is the instrument pod and this as you now know is the instrument panel this will fit in here like so but it's a bit oversized at the moment you can see I am struggling to get it in here so it all needs to be filed down until it's a beautiful fit and that will sit in there against these lugs like this now there's a lot to do and I said I was going to get some help Jonathan and David from Southern Helicopters, top blokes, they know what they're talking about when it comes to helicopters. They're helping me with the wiring because I've got my first guest and he's arrived. Pete, mate, yep. file that, get it sorted, won't be long. There are a few bits of kit I haven't got which I desperately need. So I've invited along my old mate Robin to give me some advice. What are you doing up there? Um, just checking the altimeter, Mark. Thought you'd grown from a little while. No. <laughs> so, it works? Yeah, it works fine. Good. Well, that goes with that kit over there. To work, though, because mm. I need all this kit. Radio, transponder, intercom, GPS and compass. My concern is, obviously, it's not the biggest aircraft in the world. We want to keep the weight down to absolute minimum. And when you're flying, you've got your hands occupied because you've got a collective and a cyclic to deal with and there's lots going on. As you say, really it's the workload using the stick all the time. The recommended fit would be a, a communications transceiver, a transponder and some form of navigation um, and it would of course now be GPS that you would use. This comm here is configured so that it can be remotely activated from the stick. Right, brilliant. Okay, so you don't have to let go then to be able to switch right, channels yeah, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. So there's no fumbling for buttons or anything, it's just uh, okay. ease of use, really. So that's that, that's fine. So that's a radio. Transponder. Yep, the transponder. Again, we're going to go for a panel-mounted transponder, um, which will enable the ground to identify your position in the sky. OK, so we dial that up in the window. You've got your code. That's That'll right. come up and it'll have your blip on the screen with your code on it that's so they know exactly who you are. Yep. Compass. Now, there have been a kind of new development in compasses which I've been reading about. Explain that. Yeah, it, it's, it's not so much new, it's just become more affordable, really. It's, it's a better pictorial picture of exactly where you are in the sky. So you're actually looking at your aircraft on a vertical card, seeing exactly where you're going. Okay. Last thing, you said about navigation. Everybody's using GPS now. What's the benefit, though, of this over the more traditional kind of VOR type? Equipment? Well, it's it, weight again is, is is a big issue. It's um, it's also much much more accurate. Ninety nine percent of people are, are are using GPS either as their only source of navigation in this type of flying, or as a backup. Can we fire that one up so we can have a look at, at what we yep. can see on it? I'm in I'm in a rush. I've got okay, wiring on. looms to put in for goodness sake. <laughs> Well, Robin's got it all fired up in demo mode, and we're flying from North Wheel to Fair Oaks. That's right. OK. It's a very clear screen, but actually quite confusing when you first look at it. I mean, there's a lot of information There is a lot of there. information on there. Now, we have here the plane symbol is us, obviously, and our route is the line we follow. That's right. So what happens if you're in trouble and you want to find the nearest airport to land or the nearest heli helipad to land as quickly as possible? What do you do? OK. Well, we can just hit a button here. Okay, and from that, immediately, it will come through with our ten nearest airports. 
the bearing that we would need to fly to them and the distance they are from our current position. Excellent. So it gives to you another airport. route to follow. So, and if you found that the um, aeroplane, the aircraft icon was off that line, you've got to fly it back on the That's line. That's right, yeah. That's amazing. How accurate is this information then? Oh, it's down to metres. It's, it's incredibly accurate. I'll be having one of these then. Anything else that you think I should have? One of the things that we're becoming more and more aware of now, ELTs, which are emergency locating transmitters. They're the things that go off in the event of an emergency or a crash. This one, for instance, has a, a forward-facing G-switch in it. Okay, so in the event of a crash... You bang, the, if it gets banged hard, yeah, it will go it off. it will go off. And how does that work then? I mean... Okay, when the ELT begins transmitting, that information is sent to the satellites. The COSPAS SARSAT satellite then transmits to the ground receiving station, down to Mission Control Centre and the Search and Rescue Forces. Better have one of those too then. Pete, mate. Yeah? A couple of things you need to know about this box. Yeah. Don't drop it. Right. And don't press the button. Okay? Thanks, mate. Pleasure. Section 21, the electrical system. Yes, you have your own section in the manual here to refer to, but it's a little bit shorter than I thought it would be. It's only a few pages, which is why I need help. Now, if you're the kind of person who likes putting dials in your 850cc Mini, this kit is for you. Clearly, it looks fantastic. Problem is, how do you fit it? It's not in there, but there is one more piece of paper. It's here. That is all you need to fit it. So, it's all very clear then, isn't it? This is the mounting tray for the radio and the transponder and it needs to be pop riveted to the back of the instrument panel. Pop rivets will come through from the front and the holes have been countersunk here. And the little pot rivets are fantastic because they are actually used on the blades, but they are little countersunk pot rivets as well. So not your average pot rivets. They will fit through the four holes. It's better to locate all four first so you know they're all going to fit. There you go. Fortunately, the instrument panel already comes with its holes cut out for the instruments. You have to modify it a bit, but not too much. Right, those are in like so. And then, standard pop rivet gun. Just keep squeezing. There you go. Got a lovely finish there on the front, nice and flat, which means when I put the fabric over the top, you won't actually see where the pop rivets have been. So, one down, three to go. All right, mate? Yeah, fine. Yeah, come yeah. sorted. Now I can cover it. What I need is a piece of sticky black plastic. This is going to be the beautiful finish on my instrument panel. It's very very light which is very important. Everything should be light in this helicopter and the way you do this is lay down the plastic. We don't want any rubbish because it's got to be perfectly flat. Then lay on the instrument panel like so. Cut that out. Now, this is the bit where we get in some sticking. Any wrinkles? Through. 
just a case of following almost by feel the edge of the aluminium of the blade. 